Hello everyone, I hope everyone's doing good. In the last video, we took a look at valence show electron pair repulsion models, or VESPER, which helped us predict the molecular geometry around a central atom by minimizing the repulsion from like charges. We saw how lone pairs repel on bonding groups, impacting the symmetry and the geometry of the molecule. Yet VESPER is a prediction of molecular geometry around that atom but has no characteristics or description of what is happening with the electrons or atomic orbitals. Throughout this video, I want to focus on electron geometry, introduce orbital hybridization, and how the electrons are behaving to minimize repulsion and achieve the ideal bond angles. Let's start our analysis by identifying what's going on in carbon to accommodate four bonding hydrogens in methane. Looking at the valence shell, the atomic orbitals in carbon are 1, 2s orbital and 3, 2p orbitals. Each p orbital is perpendicular from the other two, or being 90 degrees from each other. The 2s orbital has a pair of electrons, and the 2p orbitals has two unpaired electrons in carbon. Just off the bat, we can see that our starting setup for carbon is far from our predicted tetrahedral arrangement of 109.5 degrees, bond angle that we predicted with Vesper. Well, when carbon makes the four single bonds with a hydrogen atom, it wants to ensure that each bond is equivalent. Yet to ensure energetically equivalent bonding orbitals and achieve ideal bond angles, we need to create four equal hybrid orbitals. Hybrid because we are going to merge both the S and P orbitals in the valence shell to ensure a new set of bonding orbitals that are all equivalent. To be defined as a bonding orbital, the orbital must have an unpaired electron that will become paired throughout the formation of the bond. So in the first part of forming hybrid orbitals, in the case for carbon and methane, one of the paired electrons will be promoted to one of the empty 2p orbitals from the 2s, hence creating four energetically inequivalent orbitals, each containing one unpaired electron. Following promotion, the four sets of orbitals are hybridized or all merged together, creating an sp3 orbital set. Each of these orbitals holds one electron, there's four of them, and they're all energetically equivalent. In hybridizing orbitals, it's important to remember that the number of orbitals formed must equal the number of orbitals that we merged. So in the case with carbon, since we merged 1s and 3p orbitals, we will create 4 sp3 bonding orbitals, which are all energetically equivalent. One thing to notice about the nomenclature of hybrid orbitals is that the hybrid orbitals are named after the atomic orbitals used to build them. For example, sp3, 1s and 3p orbitals were used to make them. The energy of these orbitals is an average of the atomic orbitals we used to create them also. So in, the, so in this case, it will be lower than the p atomic orbitals, but higher than the s atomic orbitals. We'll see this a lot when we draw out our molecular orbital diagrams. The process of hybridization, while it seems to be split into two independent steps, promotion and merging of the atomic orbitals, they happen simultaneously throughout the process of hybridization. With all four sp3 hybrid orbitals that we created for the carbon and methane, we now have four energetically equivalent orbitals that match our predicted 109.5 degree bond angle. So each of the hydrogen atoms was sigma bond with one of carbon's now hybrid orbitals in the creation of methane. Moving forward, I want to talk about the hybridization behind forming trigonal planar geometries and linear geometries, maintaining our reference of carbon for comparison. In this next example, I want to analyze the hybridization of one of the carbons in ethene. In this case, we have three bonding atoms, two of that carbon, two hydrogens, and one other carbon. So in the perspective of the carbon we're looking at, we're analyzing that we need to create three energetically equal bonding orbitals for each of the bonding atoms to minimize repulsion between them. Just as before, we will see a promotion of one electron into the empty p orbital, creating four atomic orbitals with one electron each. They're energetically unequivalent. Since we only need three equal orbitals, we will only merge three of the orbitals, creating three energetically equivalent hybrid orbitals. This is what we call as sp2 hybridization. Leaving 
one unhybridized p orbital with one electron. The three sp2 hybrid orbitals are positioned in the trigonal planar 120 degree arrangement, containing one perpendicular unhybridized p orbital, where the hybrid orbitals are creating the single bonds with the three surrounding atoms, we see that the non-hybrid p orbital forms the double bond with the adjacent carbon's p orbital through lateral interactions forming that carbon-carbon double bond. Lastly, in the case of the linear geometry, we can analyze one of the carbons in ethyne. Just as in the past two examples, we are promoting one electron to the empty p orbital to create four unpaired atomic orbitals. But since we only need two bonding hybrid orbitals in this case for the two bonding atoms, one being hydrogen and the second being the adjacent carbon in ethyne, we will only create two hybrid orbitals, two sp orbitals, leaving two perpendicular unhybridized p orbitals. These unhybridized p orbitals will go on to form the double and triple bonds respectively. Based on our understanding of bonding, triple bonds are stronger than double bonds and double bonds are stronger than single bonds. We can match what we just learned with hybrid orbitals with that statement. Since s orbitals are held closer and more tightly by the nucleus than p orbitals, the more s character a hybrid orbital has, the more tightly it will be held. sp orbitals have the most s character. Since hybrid orbitals are built off an average of the atomic orbitals merged to create them, and sp orbitals are only consisted of one s and one p orbital. Respectively, sp2 has the next highest for double bonding, and sp3 has the least. When we were analyzing molecular geometry, we were only focusing on the bonding groups and angle between them. But with orbital hybridization and electron geometry, we want the orbital holding the lone pair to be energetically equivalent to the orbitals that are unpaired and ready to bond. All in all, Vesper molecular geometry is built based off bonding groups, but electron geometry and the rationale behind hybridization of an atom is to accurately account all electron groups, both lone pairs and bonding atoms. For example, ammonia only has three bonding groups, but four electron groups, with the one remaining as a set of lone pairs. Its atomic orbitals will still hybridize in this case to form the four sp3 hybrid orbitals, forming its tetrahedral electron geometry. But once ammonia is formed and the bonds to hydrogen are created, the lone pair will repel the bonding groups, giving us that trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry that we're used to. Don't worry, we'll dive into a lot of examples when we do practice problems and molecular orbital diagrams in future videos. Even with larger molecules, we can label the orbital hybridization, electron geometry, and molecular geometry of all the internal atoms. So the atoms bonding to more than one other atom. Or atoms having more than two bonding groups for another definition. But before we wrap up, I just want to add one little detail that isn't talked about a lot. Why haven't we mentioned the molecular geometry of, or electron geometry, of molecular of molecules consisting of only two atoms, so diatomic. This is why. With an atom consisting of only two atoms, there is no central atom for us to analyze the geometry around. There's no internal atom. Second, orbital hybridization is actually a mathematical concept that helps us understand how atomic orbitals hybridize to accommodate electron groups at certain angles. Since two points cannot create an angle, in the case for a diatomic molecule, those groups will not hybridize. So in diatomic molecules, we have no hybridization happening. The only bonding that's happening is between atomic orbitals. The atomic orbitals will linearly combine and form the sigma or pi bonding that we're used to, but we just don't need to hybridize. In the future, we're going to do a bunch of practice problems, and I truly hope they help. Uh, till then, wishing you guys the best. And remember, you can download all these pages you've seen throughout this video for free on my website.